Well, greetings, test takers. This is uh, Dean Denny. I'm coming to my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. Uh, today's 15 minutes is on the bond teeter-totter and how we're going to use the bond teeter-totter as SIE test takers or Series 7 test takers or 65 test takers to turn what are uh, should be judgment questions into aim and shoot point and click questions. I also want to illustrate why the teeter-totter is a better uh, aid to you for a potential dump sheet or a data dump sheet than as the triangle. The main reason you can see here on the teeter-totter or seesaw is that this takes into account interest rates going up or down. I joke, if anybody ever asks you about economics, finance, investments, and you want to sound smart, you should say it has a lot to do with interest rates. And if you just shut up, you sound good. People say, well, what about them? You say they fluctuate. It was a, they go up, they go down. Is that good news or bad news? You say, well, it depends. Can you tell me more? All right, so uh, let's get a whiteboard here. And so as we come into the exam site, you know, before, besides all the other stuff you might want to put on there on your data dump sheet, one thing you might want to do is draw a flat line. And I'm going to illustrate to you in just a moment that a flat line represents a bond at par. So let's put that in there. And then we're gonna be looking at interest rates fluctuating. So let's put that over here. And uh, let's say that we're looking at a Ford Motor Company venture. And let's say that this has uh, 10 years to maturity. Now let's say it's an 8% debenture. Let's put that to some work, right? You're lending for some money when you get paid. 8% debenture, 10 years to maturity. And let's say it's a callable in five years. Five years at par. Okay, so that's the bond we're gonna be looking at. The first thing I wanna show you is that if we buy this bond, if we buy this bond at par, what I wanna show you is that all these yields are the same. And so the yields we're gonna be concerned with is the nominal yield. Now the test, the nominal yield is also known as the coupon. It's also known as the fixed or stated rate of return. What will they call it on your test? Whatever you're not prepared for. And it's you know, like a little circle here. I do so they put that there. Well, it looks like I got big up here. Well, should be anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna give up. Should should be a, a, a fulcrum of this the the seesaw, right or teeter totter. All right, so. Uh, one thing that's important is when you have that 8% is to know how much you're going to get annual interest. If it's one bond and that's par, we would times that by 8%. And it's important to know that this bond pays $80 in annual interest. That'll be paid in the two semi-annual installments. But that's going to be important because one of the things you do have to do on the test, it's mainly about these relationships, but you do have to be able to do current yield. And current yield is what an investment pays you to buy to buy what it costs you. And so what I'm illustrating as we go here, that all these yields when you buy a bond at par are the same. So if we uh, took the current yield here, we'd find out that that is as well, 8%. Because what it pays us is $80. It costs us 1,000, so current yield is the same. And, and most people who buy bonds, most people who buy bonds hold them to maturity. You know, people aren't day trading bonds. The fancy word for yield of maturity is basis. And if I buy this bond at a par and I hold it to maturity and Ford gives me back par, I didn't make or lose any money by holding the bond uh, to maturity. Uh, the bond is callable in five years at par. And so if they call it in five years, I didn't make or lose any money by holding it to the call. All I made was my 8%. So as we said, one thing about the teeter-totter is it turns what well, would be uh, judgment questions, aim and shoot point and click questions. Like what they like to do on the test is say, 
your client's considering buying a bond at par, which of the following is true? The yield maturity is greater than the nominal yield. Eh. Yield of maturity is the same as the nominal yield. Ding, 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 ding. Yield of maturity is lower than the nominal yield. Eh. Cannot be determined. And eh. don't ever take the cannot be determined choice. Never take that one. Okay, now in the secondary market, in the secondary market, interest rates go up and interest rates go down. And so let's say now in the secondary market, the interest rates go up. And let's say our Ford debenture and the secondary market goes down. And now it's trading for 90% of a lot up our 900. And uh, then the reason this is important now is now we can use our teeter totter to kind of see where these yields are in relationship to. Uh, let me get a different color here. where these are in relationship. The nominal yield river is the fulcrum of the, the teeter dotter. And so when we do that, we're gonna be able to see now without doing the math that the current yield will be here, higher than the nominal yield. The yield of maturity will be higher than the current yield. And the highest yield will be the yield to call. Now I'm gonna show you the math here, but it's not so much can you do the math. The only math that you're going to have to be able to do is the current yield. And we said current yield is what the investment pays you divided by what it costs you. So why don't you hit the pause button and see if you can do the current yield. So we're gonna take 80 divided by 900 and we get 8.88, I'll call it 8.9. And we did say you do have to be able to do um, current yield. Okay, so we know that the um, yield of maturity is going to be higher than 8.9. And in fact, you know, I did this math for you round and so I got a question the same question, but you do know it's going to be more than that. And if we did the math, I'm not going to do the math, but if I did, we'd find out that that's 9.5, 9.47. And the point is not that, the point is that that uh, number where are these numbers in relationship to each other? So again, here's what the teeter tar is wonderful about. You know, your client's considering buying a bond with a yield of maturity greater than the nominal yield. Is he consider paying a premium price? Eh, R, eh, discount, ding, 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 ding. Cannot be determined, eh. Or your client's considering buying a bond at a discount, which of the following is true. The yield of maturity is the same as the nominal yield, eh. Yield of maturity is less than the nominal yield, eh. Yield maturity is greater than nominal yield. Ding, 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 ding. Cannot be determined. Don't ever take the cannot be determined choice. That's not never the right answer. All right. So um, here, if I, we did this math, it's not likely. It, it's not likely these bonds are going to be called because issuers don't refinance typically at higher rates, and so it's not likely that the bonds we're looking at are going to be called. But if they did, that would be the highest yield you could expect. And listen, on the test, you got to believe in human depravity and original sin. And if we didn't have any rules, brokers would uh, not be doing the right thing. And the right thing here is to quote to the customer the yield the worst, the worst case yield you can expect between yield of maturity and yield of call. And so whenever we sell a bond at a discount or par, we're going to quote yield the worst, lowest you could expect between those two. And in this case, it would be yield of maturity. Now, be careful, uh, test takers. If, you know, I give you a choice that said whichever is less, but you could actually figure it out. I'm still going to mark you wrong if you had a better answer. Don't you hate that? If there was a better answer. And again, the teeter-totter makes it very easy to rank the yields from low to high. Now, I'm at my teeter-totter here. Again, the numbers aren't as relevant. The only number here that's meaningful to crunch is current yield. Other than that, it's just where are they in relationship to each, to, to each other. And here you would say the yield... Uh, Nominal yield is lower than the current yield, which is lower than yield of maturity, which is lower than yield to call. Now, the more likely testable scenario, the most likely test testable scenario. Uh, by the way, we're looking at the secondary market. You say, well, Dean, brand new bonds pay between uh, you know nine and ten, and uh, this bond only pays eight. I said, well, yeah, but if we can get it at a discount and we hold it to maturity, we're going to get nine point five. That's where the decision is made. 
based on what is 9.5 relative to other bonds we're shopping around for in the primary and secondary market. That's the whole point. You can't compare apples to oranges. You've got to compare you know, apples to apples or turn the oranges into apples to make a fair comparison. Now, the more likely test scenario, this is the more likely test scenario, is that interest rates go down, causing the bond to go up. And very testable. One of the risks you have in a declining interest rate uh, environment is what's called call risk. Call risk the risk that you're not going to be able to hold this bond to maturity. And so now let's uh, again make our line. Whoa. Let's make our line here. We're considering buying this bond at a premium. Remember, nominal yield is our fulcrum of our teeter-totter. And uh, maybe you say, uh, Dean, this bond pays eight. Brand new ones only pay between five and six. I go, yeah, but we're going to have to pay a premium for that. So uh, maybe this bond is trading in the secondary market at a premium. Maybe it's trading at 1,100. I just made that up. And the nominal yield never changes. You know, Ford says whoever's got the bond, we're paying 8%. You know, that's printed on the bond certificate. So they change it, you know, so 8% at $80. And we said one thing we need to be able to do on the test, one thing we need to be able to do on the test is we have to be able to crunch current yield that number is testable. We don't have to be able to crunch yield to maturity. We just got to know it's lower. And we don't have to crunch yield to call. We just got to know it's the lowest yield you could expect, right? So very testable. I'm going to show you this in a minute. But when you buy a bond at a premium, the uh, lowest yield is yield to call. And that's what needs to be quoted. So, you know, again, the customer can. We can say, okay, well, if it gets called, yeah, if it gets called, here's what this looks like. All right, so we said one thing we got to be able to do is current yield. So let's do that. Current yield is going to be, you can try it, you can turn off the thing and try 80 divided by 1,100. And let's see what that's going to be. Uh, 7.27, 7.3. So let's put that in there. You do have to be able to do current yield. That you do have to be able to do. Now, we don't need to be able to do the uh, yield of maturity. If we did, we'd find out it's about six and a half. And you might say, well, gee, that's still a good deal. And, you know, that depends again, because, you know, this bond has a very, like, uh, very likely chance this is getting called away from you. And you're not going to get that yield of maturity or that basis. Basis is the fancy word for yield of maturity. Now, in this bond, it's very likely you're going to get the yield to call. So if Ford calls this away, we just assume it's five years. You know, we, we got, that would be less of that, but let's just assume to keep our mass up. We're assuming it's over 10 years always that we're looking at. But anyways, if it gets called in uh, 10 years, I'm going to uh, lose $100 over five years. I'm going to lose 20 bucks a year from that prorated premium. Again, not testable. If you're using past perfect, oh, be careful. They make you do all the, the math, but it's not the math of the test. You just got to know where these numbers are. And that's going to be 5.5. I think that's what it was when I did this uh, math. It's not that that's 5.5. It's that that number is the lowest number that the uh, customer uh, is going to uh, look at. And it's most likely that that's what's going to happen because interest rates are down. Now, remember, what prevents the issuer from calling the bonds is call protection. And this has five years of call protection, but it doesn't have any call protection in terms of price. So. You know, Ford, when this bond was issued, said they wouldn't call it for at least five years, but it's callable at par. Okay, so again, now the teeter-totter turns this into an aim and shoot point click question. Your client's considering buying a bond at a premium. Your client is considering buying a bond at a premium. Uh, which of the following is true? And you would say the yield maturity or basis is going to be less than the nominal yield. So price to yield or yield to price. Let's try it a different way. Your client is considering buying a bond that has a yield of maturity less than the nominal yield. What is he considering doing? And you would say a premium, right? Because this is a premium here above par and down here was a discount. So again, you come into your exam. If you have a data dump sheet, you want to use this. You draw a flat line, which represents a bond at par. Let's go all the way back here. 
And there's what it looked like when it came in. Boom, boom, boom. There's a flat line. We just looked at that. Okay, so hope you have found that uh, helpful. Smash the like button. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll link to my full Bond lecture, which is called Ford Bond, not James Bond. And I'll link to that. And that's got everything, including the Steve Daughter and all the different types of quarter bonds. So uh, I'll put that and I'll pin it in a comment as well. So um, see you for the next installment. Uh, let me know too in the comment section, do you like the longer narrative lectures, which are 45 minutes, sometimes an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, or do you like these smaller lectures, 10, 15 minutes uh, lectures? Let me know what you're, we'll continue to do them all, but I'm just trying to mix up what's available for you on the channel. So let me know your thoughts and I'll see you uh, next time.